What's up? Nostalgia coming at you. Uh, usually we say it's your weekly look at what's going on in pop culture, but I mean, this has been less than a week. We're, we're just recapping the Oscars tonight. Live, right now. So this is Dave Martinson. I'm Pat Sheehan. Uh, I wanted to kind of go over where we were at before we were about to record. <laughs> so I guess you have to start talking about the 89th, the 89th Oscars um, with the ending. Which is yeah, kind of crazy. F- what the hell happened, man? So, uh, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway come up to announce the yeah. Best Picture winner. Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. yeah. Looking good. And uh, Warren Beatty takes out the the winner, is reading the, the sheet, <laughs> looks up, looks down. Faye Dunaway is like, ah, oh, Warren, stop being so uh, funny or Just cheeky. Get, spit it out. And he announces La La Land won. Big surprise, right? Everybody yeah. expected Favorite. La La Land to win. So we thought, so we picked. And uh, about halfway through La La Land's speech, uh, someone from the Academy uh, Awards comes out and says, uh, there's been a mistake, Moonlight actually won, Right. our bad. And Kimmel is like on stage with them, so you don't know if it's like a, 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 a dig at the end, which right. wouldn't, have made, wouldn't have been a good spot for one anyway, no. so that's why I was really confused, and then uh, one of the producers for La La Land's like, no, no, seriously, Moonlight won this, mm-hmm. and they graciously walked away without winning right. and handed the the uh the statues over and <laughs> what a transition man i mean so strange and then you know everyone's on twitter going off about you know the patriots coming back the cubs yeah. coming back 3-1 leads La La land not winning enough uh, it, it just fits fits the 2016 narrative i guess yeah well 2016 2017 now and it's yeah. it, it's really crazy because Basically, everybody said La La Land has Best Picture wrapped up. Yeah. So when they announced it, I think me and you were just kind of like, okay, let, let's get this going. And we right. actually were like standing up walking over, and they're like, wait, nope, there's been a mistake. <laughs> well, crazy. Um, I mean, it, in terms of gaffes, we had the Steve Harvey gaff last year with the Miss America, or was it? Uh, was it Miss Universe? Miss Universe, yeah. sorry. And it's just. It just seems to be happening over and over. So even with Kimmel, you kind of think, oh, is this some kind of stunt? Is he trying to pull something? It, no. It's... I thought Kimmel was awesome. He was The great. whole rest of the show. All night. Uh, All night. The Matt, the Matt Damon stuff does not get old. No. It, it, he's really smart with it. I really like those digs. Yeah, they, they, they play it on like, the right line of it. Because it yeah. can get annoying to a certain point, mm-hmm. but they always seem to find the right way to go about it. Right. Um, I guess, why don't we stick with the awards and then mm-hmm. we'll move into kind of the overall theme themes of the night what stood out so the awards uh a lot of chalk yeah so apart from yeah. moonlight getting best picture it's more or less what we call what we expected mm-hmm. chazelle won for best director mahershala ali for best supporting actor right. viola davis for best supporting actress emma stone for her best uh, actress and casey affleck for best actor got it nailed it I mean, I gotta say, I got the the two best actor and actress picks wrong. Um, Natalie didn't even show up, man. She was real confident in your selection. Hey, if Natalie Portman's making perfect little Natalie Portman kids, go take care of that. You don't need to be at at an Oscars when you don't win. Um, Yeah, I I mean, I guess a lot of the surprises came in the technical awards. Yeah, early on, Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, yeah, striking while the iron is hot. Mel Gibson sneaking man. in there. That man can make a film, and he, he puts the right people around him. Was it uh, Kevin O'Connell? One for sound mixing after twenty one nominations without a win. One for twenty one. Not a bad batting Not average. Bad. Right? Twenty one. <laughs> twenty one. Uh, and they also won for. Oh gosh, I should have had this. Uh, sound mixing. Which... Yeah, yeah, that's where Kevin O'Connell won. They won for sound mixing, and what was the first? The other one. Was it film editing? Oh, uh, yeah, it was film editing. Right. Um, so, good for Hacksaw Ridge. I thought they might uh, have an outside shot in some of the bigger ones, but it didn't really have the the overall narrative, I think, that a movie like La La Land or Moonlight had. No, it certainly didn't. It certainly it. didn't. Uh, I think what I want to talk most about is Suicide Squad and Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we, are, we are known for our open hatred of Suicide Squad. It's just a bad film. I didn't want to dislike it, but... It was not good. It has a lot of problems, which we talked about on our Suicide Squad spoiler cast, soundcloud.com slash nostalgia pod. But it is Check now it out. Oscar winning yeah, Suicide Squad. For uh, makeup. Yeah, which... Uh, one I, of only three noms. Right. Beat out Star Trek Beyond was one of the other ones. Uh, Star Trek Beyond and A Man Called Ove, which right. is a, a foreign film that did not win for best foreign film. So, so DC 
three films in already got an Oscar. How it's about a good that? start for them. I, I'm, I'm pretty, does Marvel even have any? They've got about a, a effects noms and uh, editing noms every year. I don't think they've ever won any of them, though. Probably not. I'm not actually sure. Uh, Star Wars never wins either, so it's kind of no. surprising. But yeah, Rogue One didn't get anything. Like you said, it was a small category, so for Suicide Squad to take it home, I guess they had better odds. But Yeah, one of three. Well, were the outfits, or was it makeup or outfits? That's what I was thinking. Like, Killer Croc is intense makeup, but like Jared Leto and Harley Quinn isn't anything more than like what do you expect from Hollywood makeup artists. Well, like, you know... The, put damaged on a forehead that's some i guess uh, hours of vision in, in the booth man yeah visionary Intense. type stuff um yeah and fantastic beasts for costume design very cool um it, it's weird that harry potter never won but fantastic yeah fantastic beasts it, never it, won? harry potter films no wins one fantastic beast one win I guess if Harry Potter took that? place at a different time period, maybe the... It's the American uh, bias. They don't want to give it to the British True. settings, I guess. I don't know. I guess not. What stood out to you in terms of the awards? Uh, let's see. Well, Arrival got sound editing. I think that was our first uh, first Upset. sign of La La Land. Yeah. When La La Land didn't run away with all the down ballot awards, mm-hmm. which we had talked about last week about being a, a possibility and would have been an indicator that they were going to have this huge night. Right. But they lost sound editing to uh, to Arrival, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, we shot the, the sound in the movie. It's, right. it's a great win. Uh, and then, at, you know, as as we kept going, La Land only won uh, Best Production Design out of all the other smaller awards. Right. Uh, so I think that was really... Uh, I mean, I, I expected La La Land to win Best Picture, but if anything, I thought they were more guaranteed the smaller awards. You know, yeah, I don't know, and that's the thing is I think with all the nominations, people were expecting them to kind of just pile them up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a lot of these movies really did have some. Uh, they had the the right, and they they had the the uh, resume to win these. I mean, Arrival, we we talked about it. I think that was yeah. actually one of the upsets we called. Yep, um, true. Hacksaw Ridge, the the sound uh, editing on that was fantastic. Putting the bullets in with the music and mm-hmm. all the other sounds that kind of come along with. And the we, we called uh, original screenplay Manchester by the Sea mm-hmm. winning over La La Land. Yeah, saw that one coming. But Chazelle still did win Best Director. Yeah, uh, so, which is right, rightfully. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think how they really like him because he's a really traditional mm-hmm. uh, filmmaker. Like he's being compared to Steven Spielberg a lot, and yeah. the way he goes about his craft. Uh, so, but it's interesting because if any, if if I thought anything was going to happen, it was that La La wins Best Picture, but Barry Jenkins swoops wins in director. for a director, not the other way around. Really didn't think that was an option. Chazelle's going to be able to make pretty much anything. Right? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah. What, what would La La made? La La made? La La made, La La made like. Over three hundred million dollars worldwide. Yeah, it was what a bunch of like, f- yeah, fifty. An original million. musical, man. Like it, it's a crazy success. So, yeah, he'll be able to do what he wants, get bigger budgets. So. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a budding star. O- only thirty-two. It was a big night for uh, people, kind of overcoming odds. You know, in a lot sure. of ways. I mean, uh, Viola Davis. She, I guess she's not really overcoming an odd, but she had been nominated twice. Getting over the hump. Yeah, got snubbed for an, an Oscar win uh, for The Help. Uh, she got over the, the snide. Mahershala Ali, he's 47. I mean... Oh, is he that old? He's that old. Really? Isn't it? No, I thought he was like 40... I thought he was like Casey Affleck's age. Is someone 42? Yeah. I, I thought he was 47. Oh. Well, fill some air. Let me find out. <laughs> um, but... The the really interesting thing is you know you look you go through and you look I mean Emma Stone obviously not a um, not somebody who's kind of overcoming the odds but you look at Moonlight winning you mm-hmm. look at Hacksaw Ridge coming in for for some of the technical awards Suicide Squad a lot <laughs> of really uh, out of nowhere type wins or people that are kind of getting shine late in their careers or early in their careers. Than I mean, expected. Casey Affleck's late in his career. He's in his mm-hmm. early 40s. Ali is 43. And they're 43. Around, around the same age. And, and Damien Chazelle, I mean, he's 32. He's the youngest director to win now. Yeah. So a lot of really cool stuff uh, in terms of who won the awards. I mean, Moonlight, obviously, with maybe the biggest upset for, I don't I mean, I guess the artist, but was that favorite one? I don't even remember at this yeah, point. Yeah. Moonlight more than anything, just because it's such a crowning achievement given it's the a, production it, that it went through and the right. the crazy uh, th- hoops that Barry Jenkins had to go through, given the incredibly small budget and yeah. time constraints I that, was say, the that they had. So I mean, a huge upset, um, and really a really interesting way to end the Oscars, which. Uh, <laughs> 
Interesting, definitely. <laughs> it kind of it kind of started to drag near the end, which happens with most of these award shows. Yeah. But I thought the first two and a half, three hours yeah. really moved along pretty well. I thought Kimmel did a great job hosting. And why don't we talk about his performance? I mean, his opening monologue was, I, th- I thought it hit just the right tone. Yeah, I think so. so it's kind of like that thing you need to hear right now. Right. Whether you want to or not. I thought uh, but he, it's like it's like it's like smart funny, right? You know, it's not just the low hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. The the big question coming in was how o- how often or how much is he going to incorporate Donald Trump and his uh, Donald Trump's open hatred towards uh, actors, not certain that. actors, especially Meryl Streep has gotten some them coastal elites, <laughs> right? Uh, so I thought he towed that line really well. He didn't re- necessarily bring it up directly until he was really doing the tweets, the, the tweets at him, screen mirroring. Um, which I mean, the way the response that those got was pretty amazing yeah. in and of itself. Closing like two hundred thousand re- retweets, pretty right. crazy. But kind of like pulling in Meryl Streep and calling her out for being an overrated actress. Yeah, like yeah. Quote, or things yeah, like that. Funny. Just little jabs really that worked out. Really satirical well. jokes. Well, what were some of your favorite Jimmy Kimmel moments from the night? Uh, well, I think he, he just went after Damon right away. I would s- calling him out for the the great taking the Great Wall right. and passing on Manchester by the sea, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the Great Wall being a bomb, which he then calls back <laughs> to with "We bought a zoo," which is his <laughs> most recent bomb before the Great Wall. Yeah, back uh, like six years ago. Uh, then when him and Affleck, Damon Affleck were on stage, they uh, played him off, introduced yep. Damon as the guest. Like it, it was done really well. I think that's hilarious. Yeah, he the Damon stuff was absolutely great. Um, the the We Bought a Zoo thing is probably my favorite <laughs> uh, part. I, I People thought, forget about that movie. So yeah, and that's the thing is that when you have as many hits as Matt Damon does, you can definitely kind of sweep that one under the rug. Of but course, terrible movie. Um, I thought the mean tweets. Was really good. Sure, it, it's a staple of his show. And yeah, people love it. It's one of the most viral. You can always uh, do them. Pieces of content yeah. does. Um, Did you like the thing when he had the tourists unawares walk inside and talk to uh, Gary. the people in the front row? Yeah, Gary's a huge meme. Gary Be- from better than Chicago. Ken Bone. Yep, Gary from Chicago <laughs> and um, it, Ryan Gosling talking to Gary's wife and whispering right. in, her, in her ear. Huge memes kind of going. Denzel marrying there. them, whatever. Yeah, it was. It ran a little long, but I think it was still pretty funny. It's a moment, it seemed genuine. It's a moment where I think people are automatically going to think that it was definitely faked or planned, but I don't know how you can necessarily like have people act the way that those people did. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah no, I, one of the one of the women, uh, she had a really like flush face, like she yes. seemed very like embarrassed, and yeah, Surprised. they all had like their phones. It seemed like they had their phones in their hands, but they were in selfie sticks. Like they were right. they were like simple like basic ass tourists <laughs> by the look of it. So and, and, and just what Gary was wearing, he was wearing yeah. long shorts with high tube socks. He's <laughs> the best. Uh, what did you think of the food dropping down? It's like a running running gag the fact that it was a running gag i think makes it better yeah uh, and it also nice. doesn't take that long yeah like the pe- passing out the pizza way. thing like that takes forever right exactly or having the stranger things kids pass out pizza at the emmys like yeah. or whatever they did t- takes too long but yeah it was fine uh at, at this point you need a food bit you need an outside uh bystander bit and i think kimmel did pretty good pretty pretty good with those so. yeah i thought kimmel all night was good. Even the way he kind of introduced people made little jokes around things. Yeah. Um, like when he held the kid up. Uh, the, or, the kid from Lion. Yeah, the kid from Lion. Sunny. Some and had the Lion Anwar. King in the background. Um, he, uh, you know, I th- I think he'll probably be a, a host that they actually bring back, which they haven't yeah, been doing. He's well. really good at uh, ad-libbing and mm-hmm. just improvising on the fly, and he can play off the people in the crowd really well, depending on what they say to him. And then no better than at the end when he was trying to insert yep. some much-needed levity when they give the wrong people the best picture yeah i thought he kind of handled that well especially how he made it into a, a laughing matter with, with right bd who definitely could have been looked at as just an old man like senile man at that point yep for sure so there were a lot of speeches throughout the night mm-hmm. um, we were expecting a lot of them to be politically driven uh, or at least have some political overtones interestingly enough i think Mahershala ali stayed away from that where He's... he didn't so much at the sag awards he was more gracious, uh, which is fine, I guess. You know, he already gave a great speech. Uh, Viola Davis also was pretty gracious. I mean, she said some more like inspirational things, but I think right. they were more like overarching and, I guess, vague, not really directed at any you know one political climate or anything like that. 
Uh, but I, if anything, there were just a few moments where people were like, you know, I don't support walls or, mm-hmm. you know, like, let's... Yeah, end. that was Gail Garcia Banal when he was presenting, right. said, I'm against any form of a wall. Um, probably the most direct political, uh, politi- uh, politically driven speech was from Asghar Farhadi, who... Uh, is the director of of Life of a Salesman. Right, best Um, foreign film winner. Right, so one for best foreign film. She is um, Iranian, and she chose not to come over in solidarity with her uh, immigrant uh, brothers and sisters. Right. Um, So she had Anusha Ansari read her statement, and it pretty directly talked about uh, how she's against the travel ban. She believes Mm -hmm. that it pits people against each other. Pretty powerful moment. And then uh, White Helmet, one for uh, documentary short, a uh, short subject, and uh, talking about Syrian civil war. Yeah, the Syrian civil war, and, and actually the cinematographer uh, was denied entry into the U.S. Uh, based on his nationality. So uh, it wasn't as strong as I thought it would be, mm-hmm. but it definitely had its moments that I think will stand out, and we'll probably get a tweet tomorrow morning, uh, probably in about six hours from our president saying yeah, yeah. something along the along the lines about the, the well, night. Ratings were really poor, I bet. <laughs> uh, what else stood out to you about the Oscars in general? Uh, well, I think the ceremony really flowed well. You kind of mentioned that. Like, I think the beginning in, in particular really, uh, you know, flew by, honestly. Uh, but yeah, like you were saying, most of the big big awards was all chalk. Mm-hmm. You know, basically what we picked, uh, what, what, what the odds were. Yeah, which is kind of disappointing, but in a way, I guess you can tell which performances stood out mm-hmm. for the rest. Um, I thought the In Memoriam, I, wa- I actually didn't want to blow by that. I thought that was a really interesting In Memoriam. Yeah. Hella names in there at this point, you know? Yeah, and that's the thing is, you you were when we were watching together, you mentioned, oh, where was David Bowie? Where was Alan Rickman? It's kind of crazy to think they, that. They just snuck into the last one. Right, they just made it the last Even though it was last one. year. And we had Bill Paxton, who wasn't able to sneak into this one. Yeah. will probably be leading off next year. Right. Um, a lot of really big names in there. People I'd actually forgotten about, like Anton Yelchin. Yeah. Which, I mean, way too sure. soon. Um, Carrie Fisher got the, the hammer spot at the end. Yep. Um, which I was actually a little disappointed that they showed uh, as the final scene her uh, older Old Leia, Leia instead of Force uh, a younger one. Um, Gene Wilder, John, John Hurt uh, was in there. Kenny Baker, who played yeah. R2, Mary Tyler Moore, Prince, mm-hmm. Zaza Gabor, I was, Debbie Reynolds. I forgot Prince made Purple Rain into a movie. Right. <laughs> I was like, why is Prince in there? And then yeah. it immediately showed a scene for him. I mean, I guess in, in total, looking at how we did with our predictions and kind of what the overall tone of the night is, is that mm-hmm. it seems like with the... Uh, acting roles you can kind of pick it out it seems like yeah all four say, all four the all four favorites one right it but then with with the technical awards that's when it gets really down to the, the nitty-gritty and if you're a betting person that's probably the ones you want to try to stay away from if yeah. possible so it seems like it unless, unless you're actually a gambling man then you probably want to put some money down on arrival <laughs> i would it, I mean, visual effects, we called that one, though, Jungle Book. Mm-hmm. That, that's actually a really cool one, and it'll be interesting to see if the other Jungle Book, which should be coming out, what, next year? Yeah. Will win in 2019. Yeah, actually, I think it was originally going to be the end of this year, but I think the production got pushed push back. back a little bit. And that's the one from Andy Serkis with mm-hmm. Christian Bale and Cumbert Batch and a bunch of other people. So, yeah, we'll see how that one turns out. It'll be really cool to also possibly see some movies, like superhero movies, start to get more... Right. Uh, so some more shine. I mean, I think everybody's talking about Logan and how they have a possibility to maybe get some Oscars love at next year's Oscars. Um, but I think just the general tone of superhero movies has to naturally move towards these kind of smaller, grittier stories, which sure. might make for m- movies that are more attractive to the Academy Awards in general. Yeah, well, I think because they're more in line with you know traditional filmmaking, mm-hmm. less um, you know huge blockbustery, uh, you know productions which is like you know what the avengers movie requires mm-hmm. for better or for worse so i guess as once avengers affinity war you know ride rides out t- settles its course you know what's what's ryan cooler's black panther look like that's an auteur director who's actually mm-hmm. sticking with marvel so you know we'll see how that goes but yeah logan universal acclaim so far uh comes out at the end of the week 
yeah, that could be an early favorite for next year. And this isn't even like a Deadpool. This is just a movie that everyone's saying it's just superb. A movie like a Deadpool, uh, I guess not necessarily in tone, but just kind of a surprise right. possible Oscar nomination seems to be Get Out, directed by Jordan uh, Peele. Jordan Peele, his first direct, his directing debut, uh, potentially could get a yeah. Best Picture nom, which would be pretty crazy. I mean, it has 100% Rotten Tomatoes right now. I could definitely see it yeah. being a scary movie that actually gets put up. Shout out David Kaluuya. That guy's yeah. killing it. From Black Mirror Dude, to Kick Ass Two, he was so awesome in that Black Mirror episode yeah. too. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see how some of the themes of this year play over into next year's Oscars. Mm-hmm. One of the really, I think, inspiring things was there's a lot of diversity in the winners of this year's Oscars. Yeah, four African American wins. Mm-hmm. The first Muslim to win. Um, yep. Would we had a win from uh, Iran, Syria? I mean, a lot of diversity in terms of. Right. Um, who won, and, and that's something that needed to happen after last year's. Right, yeah, and like that's the thing, most of these projects, most of these films were already in development before, you know, Oscar So White happened, but mm-hmm. it's just more about having them actually be recognized when they do come around, right. and that is what we saw this year, which is great. Yeah, and it's crazy, I, I don't remember the exact stat, but something like there's been 30, before this Oscars, 30 mm-hmm. uh, people of color that have won an Academy Award, and the rest have all been right. white people. It's. I mean, Halle Berry's still the only black person to win Best Actress. Should have been Viola, Viola Davis this year. today, but <laughs> nope, supporting. But hey, good for her. She finally got the notch in the belt. Yeah, right. And we, we talked at length that on our uh, preview podcast at soundcloud.com slash nostalgiapod, look it up. Uh, give us a rating review on iTunes if yes. you can. Share with a friend. Pimp the YouTube channel, please. You know we're trying to get that off the ground, and who doesn't want to see these beautiful faces? Best thing you do is throw sub- subscribe. Be really helpful. I, I mean, is it, I guess final takeaways from from tonight because. I mean, <laughs> shout out Denzel Washington, shade dude. Yeah, when, he... Casey, when Casey Affleck wins, and he Casey Affleck got a good hand. Because, in my opinion, he had the best performance. Right. And before Denzel won the SAG, Casey had won everything else. That's why he was the odds-on favorite. Mm-hmm. And then Denzel seemingly snuck back in. And I think Denzel looked like he thought he had it. He wanted it. He wanted it bad. You can you know? tell. And I think that's actually... It would have been a very historic win for Denzel in terms right. of having uh, three three, uh, three Oscars. Three Oscars. For three acting, acting, acting categories. categories. I mean, there's, a, I think, six people with two. Yeah, I, th- I think it, I think it depends. Uh, well, best a- best he would have even better distinction because this would have been best actor. But even if you count supporting, it's only like I think ten people. Yeah. So it would have been crazy historic, and he really wanted it by the look of it. And this is something he's loved for so much. He did Fences on on Broadway, won mm-hmm. the Tonys there. He directed and he, it. He produced Fences, the film, mm-hmm. got this whole thing going. Obviously, he's the whole star of it, and then didn't get it. Lost to Casey Affleck, and despite his abuse allegations. Yeah, but it's not gonna be Denzel's last opportunity to get it. No, um, he works pretty pretty frequently. It's also amazing to think that there's Casey's the one who'll go away. Oh yeah, he can't, he's up and down. Yeah, he 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 does weird he takes weird choices in terms. I of I mean, most recently we does. saw him in Interstellar, but he's just part of an ensemble in that. Casey Affleck. Yeah, he's uh, Jessica Chastain's uh, brother. Oh, that's he right. He stays on Earth. Wow, I forgot about yeah. that. Man, I, yeah, I totally forgot about that part. Weird. I, I actually <laughs> was like thinking, yeah, I don't even remember the last movie I saw him in, maybe one of the Oceans movies, but... Nah, that's a while ago. He was in that Out of the Furnace with, uh, uh, what was it, Woody Harrelson in Bale, but that yeah, wasn't that good. I never saw that one. Yeah, yeah, and then he made the the documentary where all the um, like controversies around, and that people have talked about as one of the worst decisions he could have right. possibly made for his career at the time. So, yeah, I can see him going away, but Denzel will, will still be there. Viggo Mortensen will still be there. Ryan Gosling, I have a feeling, will get a lot of nominations I mean, in his it, career. Head, head, hit up their Wikipedias. You'll see what they have. They all have future projects, plenty of them. Uh, we'll definitely be seeing Gosling and Blade Runner. Yeah. Probably the most notable film coming up for any of those guys. And shout out Andrew Garfield. because Yeah, even, the comeback. Right. Even though he didn't win Best Actor, which no one really thought he would, the fact that he had two performances that people said could have been Oscar nominated this yeah. year. The comeback is so real for this guy. Absolutely. And sky's the limit, really. He'll definitely win a Best Actor. Early, he's place. in his early 30s, yeah. And he, if you listen to his interviews, he really is into quality films. You know? mm-hmm. And he, 
he he said it speaks from a guy who loved Spider-Man growing up, right. but he just really likes good scripts and you know directors that he believes in, like a Scorsese. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Garfield's definitely a guy to pay attention to because I think he's gonna really go on a good run. Yeah, and that Emma Stone girl, she might have a good career too. Yeah, sh- shout out Super Bad Man. Jonah Hill Dude, has two real. Oscar noms. Uh, Emma Stone has one Oscar nom and one win. I mean, they're both like around thirty. Crazy. Seth Did not Rogen, see that coming. Seth Rogen presented tonight had maybe one of the coolest presentations where he, yeah, with Michael J. Fox. Yeah, for, with the Back to the Future love, and then that was he great. started singing Hamilton on stage. Which, yeah, it was so <laughs> it was so awesome. Um, How'd you feel about JT Justin Timberlake singing? one of the most vanilla boring songs of 2016 to open the whole show. Well, if you want to go back and relive our Oscars experience, go check out our uh, Twitter, SoundCloud. No, I'm pimping. Twitter.com. SoundCloud uh, still. Yeah, Twitter.com, Nostalgia Pod. Uh, I basically said it's the most vanilla song ever. And I, I just wanted JT to jump into one good song. It, just like Sting, I just wanted him to sing sure. Fields of Gold. You know, just give us give the people what they want. <laughs> Uh, that that's one of the parts of the Oscars which I think is at least it got out of the way. It was the open. I think the opening number makes it the most defensible act mm-hmm. because it is still Timberlake, you know, performing yeah, at the it, end of the day. It, it brought the energy way up, and, and they actually sustained it for a while. Um, playing all the songs in the middle, especially when you have the two La La Land songs, which are kind of slow and really bring the mood down. I mean, heck, Sting song John Legend down. doing City of Stars is way more lively obviously than gosling because mm. hey fancy that one of those guys is a singer um shout out to the girl from moana I yeah i see where i wrote her 16 years down. old basically her debut doing anything professionally mm-hmm. uh, she was fantastic and she even got hit in the head while she was performing yeah with the the flowy fabric uh flag things and didn't miss a beat no killed it also uh l- poor lin-manuel miranda did not win the uh, Oscar for Best Original Song, mm-hmm. so he will not be the youngest EGOT winner. But I have a, a or feeling. youngest PGOT winner. Let's not forget <laughs> he has the Pulitzer too. Pretty crazy. Uh, he'll he'll get the, he'll get the PGOT eventually. Now Viola Davis needs to drop that fire single. Maybe, get that Grammy. Yeah, maybe maybe they'll work something out where he's like, "Yo, give me a, a fire movie and I'll help you with that single, and we'll both be EGOT." So Yo, that's cool. actually that's actually a decent idea. I mean, I, I like both of them. They, they link up, make a movie, and then he does the soundtrack, and she sings it. There it is. There it is. Awesome. Um, any last thoughts? Uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was solid. I yeah. really liked it. I, th- I think if, if there's a slow part to the show, I think it's when they do like the like the awards show ceremonies that already happened, mm-hmm. like when they honor Jackie Chan, right. uh, like when Vince Vaughn talked. Uh, there was a few other moments like that. And like I feel like it's tough because they already ignore a lot of awards and like do them ahead of time or just don't mm-hmm. actually show them. But like at the end of the day, like those segments do kind of make them drag. But when it, I, then again, when it's this long already, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be long anyway. Yeah, I think the last hour is always gonna feel long, especially mm-hmm. because sometimes the way that they decide to do the awards, like they they do best uh, supporting actor first. Yeah. So that, that takes away a pretty big award with a recognizable person who will be speaking afterwards. Right. Right away. So then you have people who are go behind the all scenes, the down ballot stuff. Yeah, talking around like ten thirty, ten forty five, and it just starts to slow down. Shout out a uh, Piper winning animated short. Yeah, Pixar. They're nominated basically every year because you know you see that short before <laughs> you see any Pixar movie. Which, and they're always fantastic. But this is actually the first time Pixar short has won what? since two thousand one. Crazy. Which is not something I would have expected because animated shorts, I usually only see the Pixar one. Right. I, I, I don't really seek them out. I thought they would win every year, so that was really surprising. Um, any other things you want to shout out? I guess OJ Made in America, Made in America uh, not surprising one for... Uh, We're done with OJ now? I don't know. People I, versus OJ won all the Emmys. <laughs> OJ Made in America, a, a million hours long documentary, wins the Oscar. I think no one can do OJ better, right? We're done? We're good? Unless you're gonna talk about his prison life, like I, I'm, I'm sure. Event, I'm sure when OJ dies, there will be a, a lot hot, more media. Is OJ an IP? <laughs> I think uh, he, in and of himself, is IP. So I guess um, Ezra Edelman, though, he's gonna be a, a force to be reckoned with. I think that's another really exciting thing. Remember, Brown was talking about this, right. but 
like Ezra Edelman, Barry Jenkins, uh, Ryan Coogler. There's so many really great. Ava DuVernay. Yeah, so there's so many really great up and coming black filmmakers right mm-hmm. now. Uh, it's a really exciting time for diversity in, in the movie world. So there's going to be a lot of great projects yeah. made and just stories told that haven't been told. So I wrote this note down. Uh, only three times since 2000 has the winner of Best Score won Best Picture. Yeah, it was what, Lord of the Rings, right? Return of the King, yep, when they won everything. Slumdog Millionaire and The Artist. And I thought, oh, well, tonight will be the fourth time for La La Land. Just kidding. The musical <laughs> still didn't win it. So... Three times since 2000, Best Score has won Best Picture. That's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. 17 times. Also, I think, I think especially with the gap at the end, one thing that can kind of come out of this is Moonlight had a not-so-great night. It still went 6 for 14. That's pretty damn What do you mean, La La Land? La La Land. Six for, yeah. Was I, did I say Moonlight so? had 8 in total. And it yeah, won, Moonlight had 8 in total. So, yeah. 3 or 4. People will say La La Land had a disappointing night going only 6 for 14. 6 for 14 is still really good. It has, especially yeah. having Best Director and Best Actress. I mean... Yeah, two, two of the most prestigious. Night. Come on. Absolutely. So, I, I hope that's not a narrative that comes out of this. But Moonlight... Man, I'm so I'm so happy that one. Yeah, it's, I am too. And if you haven't seen Moonlight, so, please check it. I out. I mean, like the tenor of the show, and like on, you know, on awards Twitter, was that everyone was really pulling for Moonlight, just no one really saw thought right. it would happen. But the fact that it actually happened is pretty pretty nutty, man. And we got to say we talked about it on our end of year podcast. You had it as your favorite film, I believe. Right. Uh, oh yeah, Star Wars is your number one, but I, you had it ahead of La La Land. I did, yeah. And I had La La Land ahead of Moonlight for my favorite film. Um, but we both said it's very deserving. It's, right. It's a story like we've been talking about mm-hmm. need, that I think is needs to be told to help represent more people in right. America. Um, I mean, part of the reason we, we didn't expect to win Best Picture is because it only made $30 million. La La Land made like 330 Which is crazy. No one saw Moonlight. And by an extension of that, less Academy members probably saw Moonlight. That mm-hmm. still is probably true. Right. But... Yeah, it overcame the odds, just like it did throughout its whole production process and the writers did during their, uh, you know, upcoming lives in Liberty City anyway. So I guess it's yeah. just a full circle loop at this point. Absolutely. Well, I think you ready to wrap up or anything else yeah, that you want to mention? No, it's, it, was, it was a good show. I liked it. Yeah, it was definitely a good show. It, it paced pretty well and uh, with a really exciting ending, which right. you usually don't get in these award shows, especially, uh, especially if the movie that you think is going to win win, wins yeah it's very like ah kind of anticlimactic this is very climactic very sure awesome uh so we just want to wrap up by saying thank you for watching please share us um please tweet at us at nostalgia pod let us know what you thought of the show let us know what you think of get out and logan Mm -hmm. some early oscar buzz there yeah and as you see movies check in with us yeah and we'll be coming at you uh either this week, end of this week, or next week with uh, a pretty packed pot. I mean, there's been a oh, lot yeah. of music. Stuff's and, happening, man. Um, a lot of movie news. Like Lion King mentioned. thing. I know. So there's there's a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah. um, we're excited to be bringing you more video content. If you guys want us to talk about something, let us know. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the Oscars as much as we did. We enjoyed tweeting with you and sharing the experience. Yep. All right. Have a good night.